So we all know the classic dish, beef stroganoff. We know what it looks like, we know what it tastes like, but what if we completely reimagine it to something that we've never seen before? Okay, so why remake beef stroganoff? Because the US Navy, as in the US Navy, the Navy, challenged me to completely remake it in a way that's never been seen before. Thank you to the US Navy for sponsoring this video. So I get to be a part of a series called Sailor Versus. And the Navy challenged me to put a fine dining spin on one of their staple dishes. Although beef stroganoff and soup dumplings kind of seem like two completely different things, they can also be one in the same. You think of a soup dumpling, you bite into it, and all the juice, maybe it's a little fatty, maybe it has some meat in it. You're gonna get that experience, but it's gonna taste exactly like beef stroganoff. Now with all that said, let's see if we can do this. I'm here with CS1 Noah Reed, a culinary specialist in the Navy. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, Chef Joshua. Good morning. Oh wow, I was addressed as chef. I'm like a little baby chef. I appreciate you coming on to a video call to do this. We were supposed to be in person. I feel like it would have been cooler if we were in person, but I appreciate you coming through. The first thing I actually wanted to ask you, if you could tell me about your career as a culinary specialist in the Navy. Absolutely. We're CS's culinary specialists and we cook for the entire fleet of the Navy. We have a mission to fulfill and we feed for the masses, anywhere between 100 people to almost 5,000 depending on the ship we're on. That's crazy, I can't even imagine that. Okay, so today we're making beef stroganoff, I believe. Why is beef stroganoff so commonly used and uh, where does it come from in what you guys do day to day? It's just such a good hearty meal, really savory flavors in it. For cooking in the Navy, it's all about morale. Eating chow is like their only off time to kind of relax. So we really want to make good food that makes them feel good. I feel like in a way that's kind of what cooking is all about. It's like you're sharing a little bit of love with everybody. Absolutely. So we're talking about beef stroganoff. I love the texture of it, I love the way it looks, but I also think we could take it a step further. Maybe a fattier meat like short rib and braise it and shred it. And then instead of coating the noodles, we take a noodle and we stuff a noodle and then we make essentially what would be a soup dumpling of beef stroganoff. I'm not sure how you're gonna get all the flavors. I don't see how that's gonna work. I have a couple tricks up my sleeve. Although my sleeves may not be that long, I believe that this is gonna come together. Before we get all fancy, let's first get some context with the traditional beef stroganoff. Start off with one pound or 450 grams of a nice steak. Here I have a little piece of picanha, which is essentially top sirloin, which is then gonna get scored and sliced into three quarter inch chunks. Get yourself a large pan, add in enough oil to coat the bottom of the pan, set it over medium high heat, and once it's ripping hot, add your steak in batches, searing to get a nice little bit of color on it. About two minutes per side, try to be fast about it, all right? We don't want well done steak. Then remove it from the pan, and add two and a half tablespoons or 35 grams of unsalted butter. Toss in two teaspoons or five grams of coarse ground black pepper. Follow that up with one diced sweet onion. Saute for about two to three minutes or until the onion begins to soften. Then add five cloves of thinly sliced garlic. Saute again just until that garlic is nice and fragrant. Toss in one tablespoon or 14 milliliters of cognac or whiskey. You can light it and get a little flame if you wanna have a little fancy time, but whatever. Then toss in two and a half tablespoons or 30 mils of Worcestershire sop. So Work. Worst shirt sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Then nine ounces or 250 grams of cremini mushrooms that have been quartered. Let that saute and cook for another two minutes or until the mushrooms begin to soften. Then add one and a half cups or 350 milliliters of beef broth. Once that's reduced and thickened a little bit, add a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of heavy whipping cream. Then reduce again for another five minutes or so until you've got sort of a, a thicker emulsified sauce. Now separately, we have half a cup or 120 milliliters of sour cream that has been mixed with two tablespoons or 28 grams of Dijon mustard. Now we're gonna add that to the pan, but don't just add it straight there, all right? Unless you want a curdled mess. So take a little bit of the hot liquid, spoon it into your cold sour cream mixture, Mix that together and do that a few times just until the sour cream mixture is nice and hot. Then add it to your stroganoff liquid. Stir together, adjust the salt and pepper levels to your taste. Finish it with a third cup or eight grams of fresh chopped parsley. Add some boiled egg noodles or whatever noodles you like. I don't, I don't know. All right, what do you want am I? The noodle whisperer? Stir together. So that's the basic beef stroganoff. Now let's taste. Okay, so we have a fork. Fork goes in. So you can taste every component in this, right? Let me, let me finish chewing, give me a second. Right off the back, you've got the mushrooms, which are nice and roasty and a little bit caramelized. There's Worcestershire sauce in there that's got just a punchiness to it. It just bop, punches you right in the mouth. 
but in the best way possible. The meat's nice and tender, it's juicy, it's still medium rare, we didn't overcook it. I'm curious, CS1 Reed, what do you think of this one? I'll tell you what, Josh, that looks amazing. That's some awesome looking stroganoff. Appreciate it, man, I really appreciate it. What to you, flavor-wise, really breaks down a proper stroganoff? Really awesome flavored beef, because you could have an awesome sauce, awesome noodles. If the beef isn't prepared correctly or seasoned correctly, now you have just old beef taste. <laughs> this is a man who understands. You have to treat your meat properly. Don't take that in the wrong context. Whoever's watching this, you always, in any context, should treat it right. All right, we got Mr. Traditional out of the way. Now it's time for a new player. Get a one ounce package of dried mushrooms, these are chanterelles, and cover them with one cup or 240 milliliters of boiling water. Cover that with plastic wrap and let that soak for about five to 10 minutes. Once the mushrooms are nice and hydrated, wring out all the liquid from the mushrooms, place them on a cutting board and chop them finely and place them in a separate bowl. Now, instead of steak, you're gonna get yourself two nice, big, meaty short ribs. Season them generously with kosher salt. Get yourself a five quart Dutch oven, add in your short ribs and sear them for two to three minutes on every side until you get a beautiful brown crust. Now remove them from the pan, dispose of any of that oil that's been sitting at the bottom. Now it's gonna be very similar to the original version. On medium heat, add your two and a half tablespoons of butter, followed by your pepper, let that toast, sounding similar. Then add in your one diced onion, season that with salt, add in your five cloves of garlic, but this time they're gonna be finely chopped, followed by your chopped mushrooms that you've rehydrated. Then add your mushroom soaking liquid, two cups or 480 milliliters of beef broth. Now bring that up to a boil, then reduce to a light gentle simmer. Lower in your two seared short ribs, place the lid on top, then drop that voluptuous beauty into an oven set to 325 degrees Fahrenheit for two and a half to three hours. Once that's done, remove it from the oven, take out your short ribs, get two forks, remove their bones, and then shred the meat as finely as you possibly can. I mean, look at that. That looks awesome. It's fatty, it's tender, it's full of flavor, and it's moist. Once your braising liquid is nice and reduced, toss in two tablespoons or 28 grams of a whole grain Dijon mustard, followed by a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of heavy whipping cream. Bring that back up to a simmer. You're then going to sprinkle in one tablespoon or 14 grams of unflavored gelatin. Stir that in so it's nice and evenly distributed. Then add your sour cream to the mixture, add back your shredded meat, along with your third a cup and eight grams of fresh chopped parsley. Stir that all together. Season a taste with salt and pepper, and that's gonna be our soup dumpling filling. Then just pour that into a shallow third pan or eight by eight baking pan. Cover it with plastic wrap. You know, let the plastic wrap suck shin onto there and place it in the refrigerator overnight. Once your filling is ready, it's time to make your soup dumpling dough. First, wrestle yourself a medium sized bowl. To that, you're gonna add two and three quarters of a cup or 400 grams of all purpose flour. Add in three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of hot water. Begin kneading that if you have asbestos hands like me. Now dump that out and knead by hand for about eight minutes or until you get a nice, smooth and elastic dough. Wrap it nicely in plastic wrap. Give it a face with some personality and some love and, and then toss it to the side and forget about it for 30 minutes. Take your dough, divide it into four even pieces and each piece, pat it down into a nice little oval shape, then flouring when needed and then begin running it through a pasta roller on setting number one, slowly working your way up to two, then to three, and then finally all the way up to five until you get a nice thin sheet that you can at least see your hand through. Then take a three and a half inch biscuit cutter and cut them into rounds. See, look at that, it looks beautiful. Now once you've got rounds for all of your dumpling dough, get your pan that you've solidified your stroganoff, invert your pan, let your gelatinized stroganoff fall out. Look at that, beautiful. And then cut it into half inch little cubes. Get them as even as you can. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, even is always better. Now to shape the dumpling, it's very simple. Grab a piece of dough, add in anywhere between two to three pieces of your stroganoff, fold it like a taco, pinch the center, so you sort of got this like glued top taco. Then take each side, bring them together to the center, and then pinch them to that one center point on both sides. So now you have an open sort of star. Then just close those edges all together so everything is completely and totally sealed, and that is your dumpling shape. Now just rinse and repeat with all of your dumplings. Now from here, all you need is a shallow pot of water. Bring it up to a simmer, place a steamer basket on it, add some cabbage leaves just so it doesn't stick. Then add in your dumplings with at least one inch of space in between all of them. Add on your lid and let them steam for anywhere between seven to 12 minutes or until they're completely cooked. Open your steamer basket, place them on a plate, and enjoy a soup dumpling that's filled with hot, rich and creamy beef stroganoff. You don't need to add anything to this. Now let's prove why. 
Okay, so the adaptation is a soup dumpling. This is a new format of both soup dumplings and beef stroganoff marrying and creating two completely separate items in one. Let's take a bite. Textures, right on spot. So CS1 Reed, I'm very curious, what do you think of these? We've got them all wrapped up, everything's consolidated within this beautiful little package that is filled with hot and juicy beef stroganoff. That is extremely unique. That is some fine dine cooking right there. But we need to have a challenge to see if you can hold up cooking for the masses. How many people are we talking here? Probably push two or 300. CS1 Reed, I very, very much appreciate you showing up and just <laughs> watching me cook all day. That's, uh, that's a big task to ask. Oh, a little uh, rhyme there. So I appreciate it, and uh, I will see you in that challenge. But do you want to know what else you can turn into the form of a soup dumpling? B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made soup dumplings that are, well, beef stroganoff, and I think it worked. So thank you again to the US Navy for sponsoring this video, and thank you to CS1 Reed for your thoughts, helping us out, talking to us about this. Keep watching for more exciting videos that I made with the Navy. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.